Welcome to another video with Mr. Long and we are looking at spreadsheets or Excel and we are going to do an introduction into formulas. So if you've never done a formula in Excel and you want to know how or why we use Excel, then this is the video for you. So let's first of all start off with how do we enter in a formula. So just the basics quickly is that you must always start with an equal to sign. So you'll start your formula with an equal to sign and then you will type in the values and pluses and minuses and divides in terms of what you want the calculation to be. So like in this case, you're taking 15 plus 56 divided by 2. Remember, the divide sign is that slash and the time sign is that little star. But if you remember your mathematics, you must remember that sums are done in a particular order. If you remember bod math, I don't know if you remember that from your math class. Well, you must also remember that bod math is applied in Excel. So that B means we first do the brackets and then we will do the O, which is order. Any exponents, any things to the power is what we'll do second. And then after that, we'll do divide and multiply. They're almost done together. You can almost do them from left to right. So do all the dividing and the multiplication. And then you do any addition and subtraction again from left to right so those are normally done all together as well if you don't know bod mass you might be familiar with pem das which is parentheses exponent multiplication division addition and subtraction it's exactly the same it's just the different names for it so let's have a look at this example again so in this case there are no brackets and there's no order but there is a divide sign which means we must do this part first the 56 divided by 2 will happen first so 56 divided by 2 that is going to be 28 and then there's no more divides there's no more multiplications and then we can go to any additions and subtractions and there is our plus our addition of 15 plus 26 so our answer in this case is 43 so that's what would be expected to see in the cell with that formula now maybe there was a situation where this was to work out the average of two marks so this is mark one that's mark two then this calculation is very wrong because it's not doing it right you first add the numbers together then divide it by two so it would be best in this case to add brackets around those two marks so that it does that part first so it will do the brackets first which means add those two numbers together and we get 71 and now we can go on to the division which means 71 divided by two which will give us an answer of 35.5 so that's why it's very important to remember your brackets and remember the order that calculations are done so let's go try this in excel quickly so here i've got a spreadsheet where we're going to be doing some calculations over here we can see we've got a bunch of people with their marks and we're going to work out their average so i'm going to click over here and if i click there i'm going to in this part over here in the formula bar i'm going to put in the formula so we're going to work out the average of those two marks now you would think this is the way to do it we would say equals to the 35 plus the 32 because they got 35 and 32 and we divide it by two because there are two marks now remember what we showed earlier is that we should probably have brackets around the two values so if i do that so now it's going to take those two numbers add them together and then divide it by two so that will give me the average of those two marks and I press enter and there we go there it says it's 33.5 so that's the average of those two marks but now we have two problems first of all if I move to this cell I'm going to have to do the same formula again but if I move my mouse now to the block till it becomes a black X I can actually copy that formula down and it will copy it all the way down the problem here is it's copying the same numbers every single time and now I would have to go and edit them so that it's these numbers but that's quite complicated so that's a bit annoying the other problem is later on maybe I made a mistake and say hey Johnny you got 30 for this exam so if I type that in now I've got to go and change the formulas and that's also very annoying so that's why it's actually not a good idea to have values like that in your formulas if you've got the values in a cell then don't refer to the actual static number but refer to the cell the block that contains that number so for example instead of 35 we can refer to C3 do you see that it's in column C and row 3 so I'm going to change that 35 to C three but now it's blue do you see how it's made a blue block that means it's going to refer to that block and then for the 32 I wanted to refer to D3 so I've selected 32 I'm just going to click here and it automatically puts a block around so it's going to say C3 plus D3 so you can see the color of the block so there's the blue block there's the red block and we are always going to divide by two so that's not a number that we're going to get anyway it's always divided by two now if I do that and I press enter do you notice it gives me the same answer because it fetched the value in C3 and then it fetched the value in D3, added them together and then divided by two. What's great about this is if I come here and I change this value to a 30, presenter, 
it will automatically update the average according to the new values. I don't have to go and change formulas anymore. And that's the beauty of Excel. Excel creates formulas for you that when you come back and you can modify, then you don't have to go and change all the formulas. And this is particularly great if you're making a spreadsheet for someone who's not very computer literate and they just need to put in the values where they have to and it will do all the calculations for them. And the other beautiful thing is when I copy cells down, if I come here to that black X and I drag it down, it will copy that formula down. But what it does, when you copy a formula down, you see it says C3D3. If I go to the next block, when you copy down, it actually changes any numbers to the next number. So it went from C3 to D3. There you can see to C4 and D4, and then to C5 and D5. So it's automatically, if I click here, you can see using the correct values as we copy down in a table. So whenever you copy down, the numbers will move down. If you copy up, the numbers will move up. And if I to copy across then the letters would change the c would change to a d then to an e and so on so the letters would change as well so it does it automatically for you so now i can just copy this all down and instead of doing a formula for all these people i now have it all done and calculated so by just putting in a formula where we refer to the actual cell blocks and not the values and by copying it down i've saved myself a lot of time so let's try that again over here we want to work out the discount percentage is they're going to get five percent on the amount due and we're going to get a final amount so there's two calculations we must first work out what the discount amount is so if they get five percent of 375 so we're going to put in a, an equality sign so we come here type in an equality sign i'm not going to type in five percent now that's annoying because when i copy that down it's always going to be five i don't want five i want that block where the five is which is g3 but i want to convert that to a percentage how do we convert five into a percentage well we divide it so i'm going to say divide by a hundred and then we're going to take that 5% and we're going to say 5% of 375 now three of means times so we just put in the time symbol so remember the times is a star and of 371 now the problem there is if i copy that down it's going to always be 371 no we don't want 371 mr long we don't want 371 we want that block f3 so take the blue block divide it by 100 and then multiply it by the red block which is 371 and that should give me five percent of that amount let's press enter and there we go. So 5% of 371 is 18.55. And again, the beauty, because I've used cell references and not the actual values, I can not only make changes to this data, maybe they got 10% and it will update accordingly, but I can click over here and drag down all the formulas and it will apply them to everyone. So they get 0%, which is nothing, but they get 10%, which is 35.3 of 353. So there's my discount amount. And let's just double check. Did it, was it correct? Yes, because it did the divide first and then the multiplication. So we don't need to do any brackets. So the bot mass was working great there. And then over here for final, we're going to say put another equal to sign in. How do we work out the final amount? Well, we take the amount due, which is 371, and we're going to minus this 18.55. But no, Mr. Long, we want to use cells. So let's take that away. No, Mr. Long, we don't want that. We want to use the block that contains the 371 and minus minus the block that contains the 18.55. Take that value, minus that value, press enter. There's my final amount. And again, I can just copy it all down. And now if I come over across here and I make any changes, let's change that to 10, you will see these two values will update appropriately. Let's try this part over here. Let's say I've got a salary and I've got two deductions, tax and the normal deduction. Let's find the total by adding all three numbers together. What you can do as well is if, if you've got a block, you can come over here to this part here. Do you see it says the name box? I can actually give it a name. So if I call this cell, press enter. Now this block is not called M2 anymore. It's called cell. And this one I'm going to call tax. And then this block I'm going to call. I'm going to call this block deduct. So now if you've named cells, you see how when I click on there, it actually changes to the name. You can actually do the following. You can still go equals M2, which is that block, plus M3, plus M4. So you can do a formula which adds those three values together and it will give you the same result. But now because you have named the cells, you can also go equals SAL and it will recognize that it's referring to that block plus the tax block plus the deduct block. And so you can actually give names to your blocks and you can use that in the formula if that makes more sense to you. And there we go and give you the exact same results. So you can also change the names of your blocks of your cells over there and then you can refer to them in the formula. So that is how you do formulas.
For more Excel videos, go to our YouTube channel at Mr. Long, RT and Cat, and just go to our playlist and you'll see there will be a playlist for Excel and other topics that could help you. Remember to click on that subscribe button and don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.